and welcome to the eighth episode of the In The Studio UK podcast. Today, Adam is going to be interviewing The Boredom Corporation, who is an amazing artist, all-round musician from Idaho in the USA. Make sure to check out our Spotify playlist, as well as all of his socials, which we'll link below. Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. Take it away. Okay, welcome to the In The Studio UK podcast. I'm joined this week by the fantastic uh, The Boredom Corporation, um, aka Brock Blazier. Yes, um, how you doing, mate? You doing all right? I'm great, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Uh, glad, glad that you're here. So yeah, uh, for those who maybe haven't heard of you before, describe what The Boredom Corporation is. Uh, I like to call The Boredom Corporation as uh, the imaginary rock band, but it's just, it's, that's, it's, uh, you, you know, like mid two thousands pop punk with a with a you know a, a modern pop flavor in it. Um, yeah. I mean, I I really like uh, the band of the nineteen seventy five from from England. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so I've had a lot of inf- their influence. So I'm kind of blending Green Day with the nineteen seventy five. That's really what I'm what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And uh, I call it uh, 100% authentic Idaho and rock and roll. <laughs> good stuff, man. Good stuff. I mean, I've, I've actually seen both Green Day and 1975. I love them myself. So yeah, great, great influence to have. I mean, the normal question I ask is what your influences. But I've seen on your Spotify, I think you have a whole playlist just saying influences. So I had a look through. Yeah. And you've got a nice uh, variation there. You got as you say, Green Day 1975. I believe I saw some Taylor Swift on there too. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nice, nice variation there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love Taylor Swift. <laughs> hey, hey, there's nothing wrong with being a Swifty. You just gotta be. No, not that. at all. She was my first like big time crush too when I was little. So. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're owning it. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. No, so, I live uh, up to it. Yeah. So besides um, all your all your own music, which we'll get into in a bit, um, I've seen uh, on your YouTube channel, which again people should definitely go check out. You do yeah. a lot of uh, covers and mashups. Um, I saw recently you did a really one I really enjoyed it I'm just an all-star yeah um, which was really good fun and I, I just I was just wondering how do you uh, go about making covers kind of you know listening to something and trying to put your own spin on it yeah so when I start doing a cover I'm I, most of the time it starts off as I'm I, I do it like exactly how it sounds and I'll like go in and listen to the drums and try to do each drum part exactly how it goes yeah. and then um, and then kind of break it off from there <laughs> um, a lot of the covers I play live are exactly as they sound on yeah. the album, but that those are the ones I'm not putting on YouTube. Yeah. Um, the one that I'm just an all star came up. Uh, <laughs> I was I was playing around with the riff to I'm just a kid. Yeah. And that ju- it just it just like popped that first part of the of all star that first verse. It just came to me and I was like, oh, this would be this would be really funny. Yeah. Um, so I just decided to mash it all together, and it was originally uh just all the all-star lyrics mm-hmm. with the the simple plan riff kind of varied a little bit and then i decided to just blend them together yeah um so yeah that that's kind of how that came up and then um i did sex by the 1975 which was pretty much exactly how they do it but i i try to make it more more authentic to me and, and <laughs> more rock and roll because i put a lot a lot more distortion and the guitars on it and yeah. i really just went for it so yeah, yeah cool. it just kind of it just kind of starts with a song i really like and you go from yeah, there goes from there yeah yeah so talking about so obviously you're talking about uh, the drums and stuff there so as you said earlier you do this all by yourself yeah you're playing all of these in- instruments and things i mean h- how you know well first off which instruments did you start off with because you've got a big range there i mean you're doing vocals guitar bass you know there's yeah. lots of stuff going on so how, how did you start out with all that yeah, I started on piano when I was eight, um, and I took lessons uh, from then through my senior year of high school, so 10 years Right. Okay. Um, that I took lessons. And, um, you know, I was about I was about 12 when I picked up the guitar, but I took lessons for like two months, and then um, just scheduling wasn't working out, so I just c- continued to play on my own, um, and it got better really, really, really slowly. Yeah. Um, and then drums I picked up when I was, uh, like 14, 15, uh, never really, never really learned how to do it. I just knew I had rhythm and I just, I just <laughs> so learned, yeah, yeah, I just, I, I just learned pieces and I've drummed in bands, uh, cool. since then. So, um, yeah, it just, it just kind of all evolved from there. 
Yeah, I, lo I love how I've, uh, you know, I asked now, when did you learn guitar and stuff like that? And you're like, oh yeah, I also play the piano really well too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great, man, yeah. So you just, yeah, hey, music's been a part of your life and you, you're rocking it. Oh yeah. So, yeah, um, it's been a big part. Yeah, so, so getting on to, um, you know, your music. So you, you've released, if not now, when, uh, mm -hmm. the album in January of this year. Uh, yep. I'm just wondering what kind of inspiration you have behind that. Obviously, it's a very weird time in the world right now. So yeah. That, what, what the inspirations were, yeah. Yeah, that, that album was was done uh, like in like like this time last year. It was like right, okay. maybe even January of 2020. It was complete. Um, and I was like trying to plan out, you know, when to release it. And so I could I was kind of going to do it over, you know, summer of last year and, and try to gig with it and, yeah, yeah. and and promote it. And then obviously that didn't happen. So I just kind of put it off uh, was trying to just figure out what to do and like just should I wait so you know see what happens see if any gigs open up and then um, and one of my friends was just like just put it out there like it doesn't you don't yeah. need to gig and I was like oh, well I guess you're right and I added a couple more songs um, to it and then it just and I put it out in in January and it was and it worked out but um, you know it was it's it, a lot of it's, in, I mean, I don't know what it was really inspired by. I, I, I started listening to um, a lot of a band called State Champs. Um, and then I really got into the 1975 with it. Um, so just kind of a blend of all my old in influences with these newer influences. Yeah. And you know, just kind of went from there. Taking that kind of pop, you know, 90s pop punk and making it fresh. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Sure. I am. Um, you know, I've got, I've got to ask about, you know, your songwriting process, because obviously you're, you're by yourself in a band setting, which is very unique. And, uh, to be honest, you're probably the first person I really have heard of. And we'll get on to how you do it live and stuff later, because I'm also really yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, do, do you struggle? Because obviously you've got nobody to bounce ideas off and there's no time pressures and things like that. How, how do you kind of do all that by yourself? Yeah, I, I've been asked that before, too. Yeah. And I, I don't really have a solid answer. I, I it just i've been writing songs like i wrote my first song when i was six right okay um i mean it was just like a, a jig basically um but i've been doing it ever since basically and um and it's it just kind of happens like you know i'll come up what happens most of the time is i'll i'll come up with a guitar riff and i have a pedal board like right beneath my feet here with a loop pedal on it yeah. um and i'll just start looping the the riff and then you know add parts to it and and what happens more often than it used to be is that i'll record all the instruments first and mm -hmm. then come up with the melodies later right okay um which in the songwriting world is kind of sacrilegious i guess people yeah. don't do that no no, no. um but but it, it has come to where like some of the best songs i've i've ever written or my favorite songs or some of the most successful songs come to me like like in my like it just happens like that and i'm like yeah. scrambling to like write it down and Before you forget, like yeah. hum it into a voice memo mm -hmm. yeah um i remember my song happier off of off of if not now when it it came to me i was playing golf and i was on the ninth yeah. hole yeah. and um and it just it just popped in my head and i was like i scrambled to write i wrote the entire almost the entire song out walking up the ninth fairway basically really? yeah and um I skipped the back nine. I ran home <laughs> and I, um, my roommate at the time was like, what, what's going on? And I was like, I can't talk. And he's like, oh, he figured out a song. Oh, so, <laughs> so I'm like running back into my studio room, I, I, like with my golf shoes still on. <laughs> and I recorded the entire song and it, it probably took like an hour to get the, the whole thing cool. basically, uh, shelled out. Um, so that, that's like, that's when the best songs come up, but um, have you um, have you been playing more golf since to try and have a similar thing? Oh my thing? gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I already play a ton. I already play like, like almost every day. Right. Uh, so uh, it has happened more than once. Yeah. Um. So, but that's the only one I can really remember succeeding. A lot of the times they'll pop into my head and I forget them like within five seconds, that kind of thing. Or I start thinking like, okay, what? 
what song is this? What song am I ripping off right now? That yeah, I can't yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then, then I end up forgetting about it. So Yeah, you like, like saying Spy by songs, but sometimes it is a little bit. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough when I, I come up with, a, with an awesome melody and then I have to second guess myself like, well, what, what did I rip off that I'm not, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, so but most of the time it starts off with uh, with like some sort of lick or some sort of, of guitar part, and then the, the words and the, and the instruments kind of come together at once. Cool, cool. Sorry to interrupt that, guys. We're just going to take a break real quick. We will be back after this. Hey, this is Brock from the Boredom Corporation, and this is my song, Happier. This, uh, is this process has changed. Obviously, this isn't your first album. Uh, you did another one, Blue Fields, in uh, yeah. 2017, 2018. Um, uh, was the process different between the two albums, or was it pretty much the same? Not a ton. Um, I think uh, on Blue Fields, none of those like instant songs came up. Yeah. Um, but there were, and there were a lot, and there were a lot fewer songs where I came up with a with a with a lick and recorded to that. It was it was a lot more lyrics first on that album, um, and a lot of the songs on there were older, like a lot older that I hadn't ever done anything with. Um, so yeah, it has changed a little bit. It's just it's just gotten easier, especially since I've gotten better at the recording process. Um, it's a lot quicker to just a lot easier and quicker to, to just lay something down yeah. real quickly and get, get, get out and, of your head and onto a something. Yeah, get it onto paper basically. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, oh cool. And go from so, there. So that, that's obviously how you how you you're recording and uh, making all your music. But I've got to ask. Yeah. So again, you you perform it live, which is so cool. Just to say, <laughs> yeah. uh, just so I'm really impressed by it. So 
how the hell do you do that with acoustic sound? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's where the imaginary rock band tagline comes in. So, yeah. um, you know, I'll take a. It, it, it all started in college when I was jamming in my room, my my fraternity bedroom, um, and I was I had taken my Bluefield songs and I had I had muted parts of the guitars that I was playing and I muted the the vocals mm-hmm. and I was just sitting in this this chair yeah. playing along and, and kind of singing under my breath a little bit so I didn't bug anybody um just just out of boredom just because where I went to college was really boring so <laughs> um just when I would do that and at night and or during parties when I didn't want to go be a part of the the chaos I would just um yeah, just just start doing that. And one one night, my buddy came up and he's like, "Why don't you just go? Why don't you go play this in the backyard? I'll set up the PA system for you." Nice. And I was like, "No," <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he he convinced me, and I did it, and it was a lot of fun. So uh, basically, what it is today is I just have you know the songs you hear on the album. I'll I'll mute certain guitar parts mm-hmm. that. I want to play so yeah. for example like a lead guitar or a solo guitar i'll just take those out of the recording um and then take the vocals i'm singing out of the recording and then just play that through the pa with the drums the bass the extra guitars the synths everything um and just play over it and and it sounds really corny but i'm like if if skrillex and dead mouse can go up there with a macbook yeah. and push buttons and drive a hundred thousand people to the to the roof yeah why can't i do the exactly. same thing you know and you don't car. see it in rock yeah, and roll so. much, but hey if it works i mean it must be tricky though to do that uh, just could it, not have a band with you yeah you'd you'd think um that's where i'm stuck because a lot of my friends in the music scene here uh make fun of me they they get <laughs> they're like, why don't you get a band already um like i know a lot of really talented musicians and they're like just I'll play with you. Get a band, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm like, I I want to, but like, the 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 you don't have to teach anybody anything. One, two, yeah. I could put together a new song tonight mm-hmm. and play it on Wednesday night. Like that's yeah. it. Just is like that quick. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing I'm tied with because I love playing with a band. Like that's that's way more fun than than yeah. doing it by myself. But like the the speed at which I can put together a new song in a new live set is so fast and and then and then i don't have to fight with band members about certain things too <laughs> well there's that too yeah that's good. yeah um, Which is nice. so where, where did the the name because obviously you're by yourself um yeah Broad corporation why, why didn't you choose to just go as go as brock what, what was kind of the yeah it it we used to be a band we used to have a yeah. full band um, when we started in high school, um, there were we were a three piece, and uh, we were just goofing off, playing instruments, and then we were like, we should we should find a name. So my buddy downloaded a band name generator app <laughs> for his iPod Touch, yeah. and uh, we sat there in my room and just hit the button, just basically hit go, and it comes up with a new band name. Yeah. We just kept going and going, and we write down our favorite ones, and we had this long list and. Well, I don't know who said it. One of them said uh, we had we had the corporation and boredom as two of the options. Yeah. And someone someone just said, "Why not the boredom corporation?" And I th- and I I don't remember if we were like, "Oh, that's awesome," or we were so done with trying to find a name, we just rolled yeah. with it. <laughs> I can't remember how it worked, but uh, it stuck. And I I've considered changing it since I've gone kind of solo. And I didn't really choose to go solo. I was, it was more like. Uh, we all went to different colleges after graduation. Right. Okay. And then my buddy in college was like, why don't you do this on your own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it just kind of ended up that way. And granted, I love doing it. It's a lot of fun. So um, it worked out in my favor. But um, I considered changing it. And then my mom has, has shot that idea down several times. <laughs> and I'm like, if my mom likes it, I'll keep it. <laughs> hey, I'm a big fan then. Yeah, now, now I've got like a, now I've got a, a bit of a following and a fan base so i definitely can't change it <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah um, what, what's the what's the music scene like in idaho out of interest so obviously i'm over in the uk and a lot yeah of from all over i'm intrigued to hear what it's like 
Yeah, we're a lot different. Um, in Boise, capital city, um, it's it's a it's you know it's it's a lot of it's a big blend. Mm-hmm. Um, but the overwhelming majority, to me, what I've seen is metal, which I think is very oh. weird. Okay. Um, Idaho is a very rural and yeah. agrarian state. Um, You'd think it'd be country music everywhere, but in Boise, it's like metal and like indie folk. And that's, that's like, um, like pop punk is, is very small. My genre is very small, regular, like skate punk and, and, you know, early blink style punk. Um, very minimal. So it, it just seems odd to me. And then, you get like four miles outside of town and it's 100% country music (laughs) (laughs) like you'd think. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's a a pretty eclectic blend, but it's it's a lot of more, a lot more rock than you think there, than you think there'd be. Cool. Would you, would you consider moving out of Idaho or is it, you know, hometown? No way. It's yeah. I was born and raised here. I, I never really thought about it. I, I, I love it here. Like I recommend anybody to come come at least come visit because i think this place is amazing um i did leave for college and that kind of opened my eyes to be oh i to be like oh my goodness i don't want to leave boise (laughs) yeah um uh we have it was we're the fastest growing state in the country right now um and the city is one of the fastest growing cities in the country so i'm i'm all about like you know come out and 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 check it out because i love it so i i have not really considered even though um Nashville has called my name a few times. Really? Uh, okay. To, you know, kind of do the music thing, yeah, but yeah. it is, it's so country music heavy. I'm like, I don't yeah. know if I'd, I would survive out there. <laughs> yeah, you, you would be uh, the black sheep, I suppose. Yeah, I definitely would be yeah. the black sheep. <laughs> well, um, to kind of finish, finish things off, um, I'm going to, pl- I'm actually going to plug your merch bit here. So I was looking cool. at your, your website and yeah. this is purely at my own interest. I saw you sell, the Boredom Corporation flip flops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people have bought these flip flops? Zero. <laughs> Zero, Zero <okay>. people. <laughs> I've, I've been pushing them. I keep yeah. telling people to get some Boredom Corporation flip flops, which would yeah. be, I think would be really funny. Uh, okay. But no, no, nobody's gotten the flip flops. Uh, okay. Well, we'll do keep us updated. If, if anybody does get a pair, you know, maybe some stylish photos of them with it would, would be. Yeah. Cool. Hey, if you're out there, go get some Boredom Corporation flip flops. That'd be sick. There you go. <laughs> well, look, this is uh, this has been in the studio uh, UK podcast uh, with Boredom Corporation. Uh, thanks for joining. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. Make sure to like and subscribe to never miss an episode. And we'll see you in a few weeks' time.